Uh, thanks for staying with us. President Mohammed Buhari has ordered the service chiefs to identify the leaders of the bandits and kidnappers and take them out to restore confidence in the areas uh, affected. Uh, this cousin with me is security expert Emmanuel Ikole. Thank you for staying with us uh, once again. Good evening to you, Emmanuel. Uh, just before we get uh, down into the conversation, let's just uh, see uh, what the address was like today at uh, Abuja, where the National Security Advisor was briefing State House correspondent. I will come back and talk some more. Uh, stay with us. Kidnapping and banditry, this menace still persists especially in the Northwest uh, and the North Central zones. Mr. President has been very emphatic. He has stated very, very clearly that this problem must be brought to an end, but using the traditional methods that the armed forces have been trained to deploy. Mr. President has made it very, very clear to both the intelligence and operational elements that their first assignment will be to identify the leaders of these bandits and kidnappers and take them out in order to restore confidence in those areas. Mr. President has said that he will no longer tolerate a situation whereby Bandits and kidnappers are the ones dictating the pace and setting the tone. And he will not also condone a situation in which our own operations are reactionary rather than being proactive. He has also indicated his willingness to provide all the resources required by our own troops in order to put down these criminals. They must be brought down with all the ruthlessness that is required. And whoever is working in collaboration with them will be brought to book. He has also declared that there will be no adjustment in whatever the National Security Council has already laid out until normalcy is restored. Uh, Mr. President is, um, is very eager and anxious to see what we're doing, and that's precisely what um, we've come to see him on, to review the situation thus far, and um, we're on course. All right, thank you once again, uh, Emmanuel Ikuli. Let's uh, get straight to the business of the day. Uh, specifically, uh, the National Security Advisor said the President uh, gave a first assignment uh, to them and declared that he would no longer condone a situation where kidnappers set the tone. But that seems to be the case in Nigeria, specifically in the North, where almost every other day, there are reports of uh, Nigerians have been kidnapped. Uh, even those that have been kidnapped are yet to be released. A uh, case in point is uh, th those uh, students in Kaduna who uh, came out you know, crying, asking the government to come to their aid. So what specifically should the, the service chiefs uh, do differently? According to him, he said that they are going to use the traditional uh, methods. What would you really advise? You know that every government has the responsibility of protection of life and property. And this situation is no, no different from what already has been there. Our security officers have been doing a good work wherever they have been, be it in peacekeeping in several countries. What is happening is not above them. It's something that they can handle and handle adequately. The first one is the, um, the armory needed for these operations are being provided. And government every year invests billions of naira in trying to ensure that what they need is actually available to be able to secure lives and property. So for me, it's first of all, the, the first one is the, the, the political will. Being ready to actually face it, the latter, and being able to actually work towards ensuring that security of lives and property. If the government is facing issues of security or issues of banditry, what are the root causes of this? 
there can be issues of greed over time. Maybe other persons trying because to um, get um, voted into policies may decide to try to cut issues here and there to be able to get persons to play that role of bandits to be able to get voting for them. There may be issues of greed where also there are, uh, maybe minerals are discovered in certain places and in order to be able to acquire those minerals for their selfish ends, they may cause insecurity issues where these persons will have to, uh, community persons will have to leave their places of abroad for them to be able to take charge of such places. This has been a Nigerian situation for a long time and in the past, the issue of the, 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 the president coming out to actually tell persons that go and secure lives and property, this is something that we have been hearing over here. This is more of lip service. Give them and give them a duration. I'm mandating you as security chief, go in there and settle these issues once and for all. Give them a, a time timeline to be able to address this issue. We have been facing this for years. And we're having citizens in the bushes. We're having citizens looking for place to lay their heads. Meanwhile, our borders are continually being opened, even by the president, inviting people from wherever they are to come where other persons are closing their borders because of issues of insecurity. There are also calls from different places where they have been commenting on issues of repentance uh, and bandits. You are doing this and you have not already solved the issue of bandits. You can only solve the issue of bandits and then start looking at what happened after the situation. So, for me, given that the mandate, this is what has been happening over the years. Now, it's not just giving an order. Give them timeline. Let all of them go at once into the field. Okay. They know this terrain. They have worked in all areas. So all right. it shouldn't be something that is new as if they are bringing it from outside. All right, Emmanuel, let me so butt in should... here now. You say there is the political will to do what is um, needed and do the right thing. Fine, they know the terrain, they know the inside and uh, outside around uh, the, the, these, these areas are where these uh, crimes are being perpetrated. If they know what to do, how come they're only being reactionary and not proactive? Is it like they do not really have all they need to stem this issue once and for all? There's a saying that an unexamined life is not worth living. If there have been issues for how many years, and then the government has not deemed it fit to actually sit down and plan on how to address this issue, and every day you just hear on the news, go and do this. Things don't work that way. This same group of persons that are behaving as if they are learning how to work, these are same forces going outside there to address issues of insecurity in other countries. They have been able to do this and do it perfectly, even in foreign lands where they don't know the terrain and all this. What is happening that is different here? The first thing I said, our government lacks the political will. If governors of a particular state actually care about life, security of life and property, they won't be coming up and saying not all banditries are criminal. This actually shows where their interest is. And it has shown also that they are on seriousness, they're only feeling lead service to them. Mm. In, the, in a country that wants to be serious, if the government fail in providing that security of life and property, which is mandated by the constitution. Such a government is incompetent and shouldn't be allowed because people have died. Even in situation of crimes where they are war, you don't lose this amount or number of people. Emmanuel, is it a situation we where we can actually ID. say for sure? Emmanuel, is it a situation where we can actually say for sure that some people are benefiting from this cause of insecurity in Nigeria? And then again, looking at all that we have in Nigeria, you know, we have the police, we have the army, we have even the civil defense. How come these issues are not being solved? Because I really don't get it. Uh, to, today we're talking about arms probe. Tomorrow we're talking about supplementary budgets uh, to the National Assembly to boost up um, funds uh, to stem these issues of security. At the end of the day, nothing seems to be changing in Nigeria. I think the, the, the first thing is, just like I said earlier, the government of the day lacks the political will. If you remember last year during the Ondo and Edo election, 
about what was the number of persons security uh, uh, force being sent to actually monitor elections? Have those number of persons being sent to these areas having insecurity issues? It shows clearly where their 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 their, their interest is. In other places where a life, just a single life, is being lost, you see the government will channel all efforts to go there and set to address this particular issue. Those corporates should be brought to book. In Nigeria, every day you hear some persons becoming negotiators, going to bargain with bandits. And the military are aware of these places where these persons are meeting. Why can't they go there and handle these people? So they know this, where these places are. They know where these bandits are and have been committing this crime continuously. At least for the northeast, let's say they know this place. Why can't they decide on a time and plan a timeline? Okay, today we are having this meeting. Tomorrow, this particular uh, agency, you handle this place, you handle this, you handle this. Why the Navy takes on the air and the rest and address this issue? We have the manpower to do this. If at the level of US, where one or two uh, of their persons, they actually flew into the country to actually be able to uh, rescue their own citizens in the country, and it took how many hours to be able to do this? Why can't we that actually know this terrain, we that know these so-called people? Because if the, the security agencies don't know these people, how come are they meeting? How come are they sending this uh, this, 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 this this news to the to the to the um to the media houses? How come is uh, Sheikh Gumi having time? Talk about negotiations and with banditry and all of that. Mm. All right, uh, looking at all of that now, you know, so let's talk about um, ways out. Let's talk about recommendations. Uh, even as much as uh, Nigerians are on the lookout to see what these new service chiefs will be doing in the coming days and months, so it doesn't end up being just rhetoric, sir. What are your recommendations? And again, as uh, Nigerians, sir, what should we be doing to hold the government to account for what they have uh, said they would do uh, for us to stem these issues of insecurity? The first, the first uh, thing as Nigerians we, know, we have to do is one, we have to learn to forgo greed and learn to be patriotic. Most of our leaders lack all these qualities. What they think about is just their selfish aim of greed and invasion. A lot of these persons, a lot of these states where they are having these issues, it is discovered. Minerals have been discovered in some of these places like Zamfara, like uh, Niger, uh, Niger State, among others. And in, in those particular areas that you discover that this issue of uh, kidnapping, this issue of banditry, it's been on the, uh, on the rise in this area. So the question is, our governors in these respective states have to wake up their responsibility of protection of life and property. That is one. Secondly, all commissioners in those states, or all the commanders responsible heading those places, they have to give them timelines to address this issue. If they cannot, they should be replaced. We should be promoting chief competence, not incompetence. Because due to this poor performance of service chief in the past, we have lost life. And if this is not addressed, People should be promoted as to do a level of service because of competence. All right, thank you. And if you lack that and cannot perform to secure life, then there's no need that you continue to be there. All right, uh, that's as much as we have time uh, for on this discussion. We have been speaking with Emmanuel Ikole. He's the National uh, Coordinator Network uh, on Police Reforms in Nigeria. No problem. Many thanks uh, once again for your thoughts and your comments this evening, uh, Mr. Ikole. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. And here's my take. Beyond the rhetoric, uh, the federal government must also encourage cultural exchange programs and initiatives that help to engender a sense of shared heritage amongst 
Nigerian people. Until these ambitions are accomplished and until Nigeria begins to work for the welfare of the critical mass of its citizens, the country's unity will continue to be up for negotiation. And until security, although Nigeria continues to intensify its efforts in tackling both the security as well as the humanitarian crisis in the short term, medium term, the underlying social economic and political factors which have created an enabling environment for the insurgency to thrive will also need to be addressed intensively in the medium to long term. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.